Good morning, Mortgage Coach users. My name is Lakeisha Grant. I'm a national trainer here at Mortgage Coach. Delighted to be with everyone on this Friday's beginner's course. I've been in the business a little bit over 13 years, and I've come to the understanding that as mortgage professionals, our goal is to always effectively communicate finance options to our borrowers and realtor partners. Well, with Mortgage Coach, you guys can definitely exceed that goal. What I want to do today is spend some time talking in a little bit of detail about how to actually use Mortgage Coach, incorporate it into your everyday way of doing business, building out that total cost analysis. And first, I want to start by explaining the total cost analysis to you. As you'll notice, the total cost analysis is broken down into four different quadrants. That first quadrant is our summary section. This is a section that talks about everything you would normally talk about with your borrower. However, this section has a little bit more detailed information as well. So this section shows the loan amount, the interest rate, the APR, term, payment, even showing reduction payments if you want to show your borrowers how they can reinvest back into the principal to save some time on their freedom point, meaning when they'd be able to pay off this loan. It's going to show them their cash to close their monthly savings, their short-term savings, which is a savings over a monthly period, and then bringing down at the bottom, showing them there that freedom point. You have a payment stream button as well within this area, showing how the mortgage payment actually declines through the life of the loan. And then you also have your payment note section here, which is showing with the double asterisk, maybe giving out some compliance information, telling them something about the estimated payment, maybe letting them know that it includes taxes and insurance and so forth. In each individual quadrant, you do have a more info button. Well, the more info button in the summary section actually breaks down the payment, shows closing costs, and even has a reinvestment strategy tab. The payment breakdown tab will show the price and the value of the property, the P&I payment, property taxes, hazard insurance, mortgage insurance, their HOA payment, any other payments that is built in to bring up that total PITI payment. Again, showing them those payment notes. On that closing cost tab, this is where you can show them the down payment or equity, the loan to value, the total APR cost, the non-APR cost, the points, the upfront MI, prepaids, contribution, and then again, that cash to close. Now, if you want to go ahead and get more in detail and show an itemized list of all the fees, that fee details button brings up a pop-up box which shows the itemized list of fees. Letting the borrower know who's paying for what of those fees. What of those fees is considered APR? What of those fees are being prepaid escrows? And then which of those fees is being financed into the loan? And this is available for each individual product that you've actually built out. On that reinvestment strategy tab here in this top section, this is where you can show your borrower how they can reinvest back into the principal to reduce their freedom point. Maybe they want to put an extra $100 a month and reduce their freedom point a little bit under 26 months. In this middle section here, this is where you can show your borrowers how they can reinvest into a short-term savings account. And then in the bottom section, you can show your borrowers how they can reinvest into a long-term savings account like an IRA or a 401k with a higher rate of return. You also have an accumulation button down at the bottom here. So if you wanted to just simply check that box, it will take all of the money that the borrowers accumulated in that short-term and long-term savings account and apply it back towards the principal to reduce the freedom point as well. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this more info box, and we're going to move right forward and talk about our monthly savings section. This is our blue graph area here. This is showing your borrowers their immediate impact. So on this particular report, it's showing a borrower that if they were to go with that conventional 5% down versus the FHA 3.5% down, they'd have $115 monthly savings. In that more info box, this is again where you can show your borrower's loan amounts, interest rate, APR, the term, mortgage insurance, PITI payment, their monthly payment, even being able to show them the property appreciation rate that you've built in. You can change that property appreciation rate according to the market area, but it is defaulted at 3%. And then also you can build in some tax benefits. So you can show your borrower what their tax bracket percentage would be and show them how they can have some tax benefits for home ownership. Coming right down to our short-term savings, which is that savings over 60-month area, 
This is one of the sections in the report that's actually tailorable. So you can change this report or this particular savings section to show your borrower a different monthly savings. So in this more info button here, it's going to explain what this particular savings section is showing. This savings is showing your borrower the savings on the money they're not going to recover. So it's taking that interest and MI that they're paying for each individual product, adding in the closing costs for each individual product to give them a total cost, and then showing them which one of those particular products has the highest net savings. Again, this is separating you guys apart because you're being able to not only show your borrowers their rate and payment information, but you're showing them their short-term savings, not just short-term savings on the monthly savings, but a savings on the money they're not going to give back. So again, the short-term savings is a savings on the money that your borrower is not going to recover, the interest in the MI, and the closing costs. We go ahead and exit out of that more info box, and now we're going to finally talk about the last quadrant, which is our long-term savings section. This section, again, is also tailorable, so you can change this. You can show your borrowers either the interest in MI paid, the total principal paid, or the total net worth. You can also change out the years as well in this particular savings section. And that More Info button, this is where you're able to show your borrowers their home value at that yearly period based off of the property appreciation rate you've built into the system. You're showing them their loan balance, their total reduction, their total principal payments, their total PITI payments, and then again showing them their total interest and MI that they're paying over that yearly period for each individual product. So I want to remind you guys that the report is live and interactive. So all the highlights that you see me making, you can actually make those highlights while you're on the phone with your borrower, no matter where they might be viewing the report, no matter if they're viewing it from their iPads, their desktops, any mobile device, you actually be able to navigate this report and explain this report, having a real life conversation with your borrowers. You can even go into the system and make changes. And if you guys need additional assistance on how to actually deliver this report in real time, in February, we're going to be having some one-on-one -on -one and advanced classes. I encourage everyone to visit our event calendar, and I'll show you guys in a second where to find that. But definitely, you'll get some more uh, different tools and strategies that you can use with Mortgage Coach Edge. I want to also remind you that this report can still be saved by your borrower by clicking on the Save button or Print to print it out. Your borrower still has the ability to be able to share the report by clicking on Share. The link that you sent them out will then populate. They can either copy and paste this link, they can send it off in an email, or they can even text it to a family member or friend. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into Edge. And we're going to start off at our login screen. So for those of you who this may be your first time logging in, you're going to go to edge.mortgagecoach.com. Again, that's edge.mortgagecoach.com. You're going to put in your company email address in the email address field, and then you're going to put in your temporary password. Your temporary password should be PASS, P-A-S-S, -S, 123, but if for some reason you've forgotten your password that you've set, or maybe the PASS 123 is not working for you, send us an email over at support at mortgagecoach.com or simply click on the forgot password and we'll definitely get you out of password. Once you go ahead and enter in your temporary password, you'll then be prompted to put in a permanent passcode and you'll be able to log right into Edge. I'm going to go ahead and log into Edge and we're going to talk about our home page for a second. Notice at the top of the home page you guys have radio buttons. Those radio buttons pretty navigate you throughout the system. So no matter where you are, you can click on any of those buttons to take you where you'd like to go. This home button will always bring you back home to this particular page. This new client button is what you will click on when you're ready to start building out that new total cost analysis, no matter the different strategies that you're building for your clients. New Partner is what you would click on when you're ready to start building out those open house presentations or even those finance flyers or the seller buy downs. The Settings tab is where you would go when you want to start setting up your own personal settings, maybe putting in your company uh, address or putting in your headshot, your logo, your MLS number, your contact information, all of the information that you want to show personalized that would show on your completed reports 
you would do that in the Settings tab, and we'll go over that more in detail in a second. The Help button here is going to be you guys' best friend. By clicking on this Help button, it automatically links you right over to our Mortgage Coach Support page. On this Mortgage Coach Support page, you'll notice that we have Quick Reference links. Right under the Quick Reference link is that monthly event calendar. This is where I was telling you guys you can come in here and you can actually view different events that we have coming up throughout the month and you can register for any of those events and be able to register for trainings that we have coming up. Also wanted to remind everyone under that quick reference link we do have access to our YouTube channel. So if you want to get some more information or be able to view some other trainings that we have or any of our YouTube videos, go ahead and access our YouTube channel. Now we're going to jump right down and we're going to talk about our recommended playlists and scripts. Within this section you can find the MC Sales training, you also find our Mortgage Coach scripts. And then I want to point everyone's attention to the Going From Price to Advice video with Josh Meadow. This is a training class and a conversation where Josh was actually able to be able to tell his story. He's being able to show how he relates to a lot of different mortgage professionals just like yourself out there in the industry. Josh is a mortgage professional who's actually crushing it in the industry and he's doing it with Mortgage Coach. But what the video does is it actually gives his story and he talks about all the challenges that he had, all the reasons why at first he didn't like Mortgage Coach, and then now showing how he's overcome all those different adversities and he's using Mortgage Coach with each and every client that he comes in contact with. So I encourage everyone to view the Going From Price to Advice video with Josh Meadow. Then jumping right down, we have some featured walkthrough videos. You can watch a video on how to create a purchase total cost analysis, a refinance total cost analysis, even how to create an edge video, how to create and use fee templates, or even how to start collecting data and filling out that open house presentation. I encourage you to go through the different walkthrough videos that we have available, use those to your advantage, be able to get an understanding of how to use Mortgage Coach if uh, you need additional training outside of the webinar trainings that we host. There's a slew of walkthrough videos that will definitely be able to assist you guys. We also have this knowledge base search section here. So in this section, you can go ahead and type in, maybe you want some information about MI. Go ahead and type in MI, hit that search button. It's automatically going to bring up some topics that are related to mortgage insurance. So then you can search advanced topics, walk through videos, frequently asked questions, and so forth. Anything that you might have a question on, you can simply type it there, and it will bring up a slew of information for you. If you guys are uncertain of what you're looking for, maybe you just can't find what you're looking for, you can always send us an email, again, over at support at mortgagecoach.com. I'm going to go ahead and go right back into Edge and continue talking about our homepage. Now this top section here of our homepage is what we would like to call our customer facing section. This is where all of your reports are housed, all of those total cost analysis that you've built out for your clients are housed in this particular section. This bottom section is our partner facing section. This is where you house all of those open house presentations, the seller buy downs, even those finance flyers. They're all housed in this section. You notice that each one of these sections have a view all button. So by clicking on that View All button, it then opens up a search criteria box for you where you can actually search for a particular report that you've already previously built out based on any of the criteria here. Or if you just want to open up all the reports, just simply click on Search, and it'll open up all the reports that you've created. At this point, you have the option of going through the reports. You notice that you have some add and copy analysis buttons available to you now. So you can either add an analysis or copy an analysis, and we have a few, uh, other trainings talking about that as well. But if you guys have any questions on that, you can always put them in the question box, and I'll make sure to cover that. I'm going to go ahead and close all of our search box here. And I want to remind you guys that if you haven't already done so, I want to remind you to download Rate Watch. Down at the bottom of the home page, you notice that there's a Download Rate Watch button. Simply click on the Download Rate Watch button. It will automatically bring you right over to our Rate Watch page where you simply just click on the Download Now button and then hit Install, and it will start installing Rate Watch onto your desktop. 
We also have RateWatch Mobile available as well. So you can download RateWatch onto your mobile device by simply going to your uh, Google Store, your iTunes, or Play Store, and typing in RateWatch in the search, and then go ahead and follow the instructions to download RateWatch onto your mobile device. You'll be using your mortgage coach username, email, and password to log into RateWatch, but you'll start to be able to get those um, rate updates and be able to know what the market is doing each and every minute of the way. So you have an MBS tracking tool right in the palm of your hand. So I encourage everyone to download RateWatch today. Going right back into our home page, I'm now going to go into that settings section that I was talking about. And on this contact info tab, this is where you put in your contact information. A lot of this information is already filled in for you because all you had to do was fill it in when you first signed up or if you're with a, a company. A lot of times these companies actually did a lot of this input for you. So your business address, your company name, a lot of information is already in there for you. But want to point out this apply now address box here. If you guys have your own application page, your website page, or maybe somewhere that you want to navigate or direct your borrower to go to, to be able to um, fill out an application or even just go to your website, simply put that web address here in this Apply Now address box, and that will automatically give a button on your report that says Start Now. When your borrower clicks on that Start Now button, it will automatically link them right over to that page. Put in your phone number and your cell phone. Um, by doing that, it gives you the option to be able to create an edge widget. By creating an edge widget, you are able to then receive referrals from family members, friends, realtor partners, and uh, anyone that you come into contact with. It just makes it really easy. It puts an icon on their phone um, so they can quickly go ahead and send you a referral. You can also come in here and change your password as well by clicking on that Change Password button. Just make sure that any changes that you make on this Contact Info uh, tab, you want to hit that Save button after you've made that change so that that, save, that change takes effect. On the Images tab, this is where you can go ahead and upload your headshot, your company logo if it's not already in there for you, and then go ahead and also select your Equal Housing logo. The product and fee templates tab, this is where you could come in and make different products or fee templates so that you can be able to quickly uh, create reports um, without having to do a lot of manual input. It would just be a drop down plug and play. To create product and fee templates is very simple. For example, if you want to create a product template, all you would have to do is click on new, we'll bring open a blank product page for you, template page, then you, all you do is just put in the information. So say, for example, we're going to build a product template for conventional, 5% down. No, this is not an FHA. The down payment is 5%. Prepaid interest days, maybe it's always going to be 15%. We don't know the interest rate. Maybe the term would be 360 months. It's a fixed loan. We're not going to have an interest only month. We're not going to have, um, we're not going to put in any APR costs because what we want to do is be able to build a fee template and apply that fee template to this product template. So automatically when we choose this conventional 5% down, it'll pull over our closing costs as well. So all we have to do is click on closing cost details. We can now go in and pull from a fee template that we already have created. If we don't have a fee template created, we can start to create one by simply going ahead and add fees, and then we can apply that template. But let's just say that we have a fee template already created, so we're going to use our conventional fee template, bring over all the fees that are applicable to that particular type of loan, and click on your apply to template. And then you can put in your monthly costs as well. So maybe you know that your hazard insurance is going to be 0.25%, your property taxes is going to be 1.25%, maybe your MI factor for this conventional loan is going to be 0.97%, and your MI cutoff is going to be 78% because this particular borrower is not putting in a 5% down payment. So you go ahead and click on the OK button. Now you already have now just created a product template for a conventional 5% down You've quickly just added in some fees and the monthly costs, and then now you can add in your reserves. And these are reserves that you would collect up front. 
So let's say we're going to collect two months of hazard reserves and maybe six months of tax reserves, and we're also going to collect a 12-month premium. And again, quickly, we've just created this particular report just that quick. We've created a product template. So now when we go in to create a total cost analysis, we can pull down from the drop-down list for this conventional 5% down, and it'll automatically pull in all of this information for us. There's no save button here, so once you put in the information, you can go to another tab, you can go straight to your home page, but just remember that if you were to come right back to your settings tab, you would go right back to your products, you notice that your conventional 5% down is still saved there. Same thing you would do with your fee templates. If you want to create a new fee template, just click that new button. You can give your template a name, so maybe this is my conventional 5% down fees. Click the OK button. And then now you can start adding in some fees by simply clicking on that add fee button. Maybe you want to add in a you want to add in an admin fee, you can type in the letter that that particular fee starts with on your keyboard, and it'll take you right to that section. So I'm going to put in an admin fee of $6.95. Maybe I'm going to add in an appraisal fee, so I go to my drop-down, click on my A, it takes me right down to the A's, and I can go ahead and click in appraisal fee. Maybe my appraisal fee is $4.25. want to add in now a loan origination fee. Maybe it's 1%. And then if you want to add in a contribution fee, maybe the seller or the borrower is going to be getting some credit some points, you can always click on contribution or C on your keyboard. Now there is logic that's built in behind the contribution fee. So by adding in a contribution amount and it's a positive dollar amount, it will automatically subtract that fee from the borrower's fees. So if, in fact, again, you guys have some contribution fees that you want to add in, just remember that you have that option. You can also select who's going to be paying for that particular fee as well. But once you have all your fees in place, you can simply go to any other template, any other tab, uh, and come back to your settings, and you'll notice that your fee template is still saved there. The difference here is that you have a Save As button as well. So maybe you want to copy this particular template, but you want to make something new. So if you want to use this template that you've already created, and maybe now you want to add another fee in, and maybe this particular fee is going to be called um, your doc prep fee, now you have that doc prep fee here on this particular fee template. You can save this one by saving as, and this is a new fee template. Click your OK button. And then now you notice that you still had your old fee template that you copied from, but now you have your new fee template as well. So just wanted to show you guys how that Save As button works. So I'm going to go back to our home page, and now we're going to start building out a report. So to start building out that total cost analysis, you're going to click on that New Client button. It's going to link you right into the client's page. First thing you notice is that you do have the option of building an individual or marketing report. The only difference between the two is that the marketing gives you the option of putting in a report headline versus individual, you'll be putting in your borrower's first, middle, last name, etc. So the system is broken into some red and black fields. Those red fields pretty much provide direction to edge, and the black fields support the direction that you're moving in. So it's not always imperative that you fill out each and every black field. However, filling out those fields will definitely help support the direction that you're moving in. But as you guys start using the system more often, you'll see when, in fact, you can skip some of those fields. For today's training, I'm actually going to be showing you uh, the minimum amount of fields that you can actually fill in and still create an effective report. On this client's page, the first thing that you do want to do is put in a first name for your borrower. Without putting in a first name, your report will not save. So make sure you do put in a first name in the first name field. I'm going to jump right down to a couple questions here on the uh, client's page. First question is asking, is this a client or prospect? This is completely up to you how you define who this particular client is that you're working with, whether they're an established client or a prospect of yours. But this button does not change out your report in any kind of way. Now, the next question can be a little bit confusing. It asks, does he or she own or rent? 
Now, I want you guys to forget the question altogether, and just remember that these, this button will actually change your report. So if you want to show a borrower rent versus own options, maybe you want to show them their savings, um, if they were to go ahead and own a property versus wasting money and continuing to rent, then you would select rent. But if you just want to show home ownership options, maybe FHA versus conventional, 300,000 versus 350, or 4% interest rate versus 5% interest rate, you're always going to leave it selected as own. For most of the presentations that you build out, you guys will leave it selected as own. But at any time, again, you want to create that rent versus own scenario, you're going to select rent. Jumping down to the referred by field, this is where you're going to capture who might have referred this particular borrower to you. So maybe Aunt Sally referred John over to us. In this partner email field, this is where you can loop in a realtor partner, transaction coordinator, loan assistant, even your processor that you're working with. There is a notification feature that's built into the system. So you are going to be notified each and every time a client views your report. But if you put in a partner email in this particular field, they too will be notified that the report has been viewed. The friendly name field is another important field on this page. This field actually helps you distinguish the difference between the reports that you've created. So maybe John has come to you and he said he wants to purchase a FHA versus, he doesn't know if he wants to purchase FHA or go with conventional. So you build out an FHA versus conventional report for him. Then later on, John comes back, he says, okay, I know I want to go with that conventional 5% down, but I just don't know if I want to lock my interest rate right now or if I want to wait. Then you can build another report and give it a new name, but you don't have to actually start building a report from scratch. You can use that copy and add analysis feature that I showed you guys in the view all section be able to copy John's information over and distinguish the difference between the reports you're creating by utilizing that friendly name field. So for today, we're going to create an FHA versus conventional. So I'm going to type in FHA versus conventional in the friendly name field. And then I'm going to move right forward to our goals tab. On the goals tab, the only thing that applies to a purchase here is purchase a new home. All the other fields are related to refinance. So if you guys are building out any refinance strategies and need some assistance, let us know by sending us an email to support at mortgagecoach.com. I'm going to move right forward to our assumptions tab and again want to point out that we have those red and black fields. The most important field that I'm going to fill in here is going to be our property purchase price field. So let's just say that our purchase price is $325,000. Notice that I didn't put any commas or decimals. All you have to do is put in whole dollar amounts and move right forward. The system will automatically put in the commas and decimals for you. Now on this affordabilities tab, this is where you can go ahead and get some information from your client. Build that relationship. Get an understanding of what they can afford. But if you'd like to skip this tab altogether, you definitely can. It's not going to change out your report in any kind of way. But again, it would help you to be able to establish some information and ask some probing questions. Maybe you want to get some information about their debt to income ratio. By putting in their annual gross income and their non-mortgage debt payment, it'll show you while you're building out your report what their actual debt to income ratio is. So maybe we ask John, what's your annual gross income? He says $108,000 a year. Let me ask him, what is your credit status? Is it good, bad, or excellent? Maybe we haven't pulled his credit yet, but he tells us he has good credit. We ask him, what's your non-mortgage debt? Everything, your car payments, credit cards, student loans, etc. He tells us he has probably about $1,000 in non-mortgage debt payments. We can ask him his savings balance just to get an idea of what his down payment is, if he can actually afford to put 5% versus 10%, or if he can only put a 3.5% down payment. Maybe John tells us that he has $60,000 in the bank saved up to purchase his home. On that interest rate percentage, if you don't know the interest rate percentage for his particular savings account, that's completely fine. You can leave it blank. But maybe if it's a regular savings account, you know it has maybe a 0.2%. Um, savings percentage, you can go ahead and put that in there. Now notice in this field, I did put a point two because I do want the system to know that it's a point before the dollar amount. It's not a whole number. 
and then we're going to jump right down to our tax bracket percentage. So in this tax bracket percentage field, this is where you can go ahead and show some tax benefits. But maybe you don't know John's tax bracket percentage. Just simply click on that Find Tax Bracket button. It'll link you over to a separate page where you can search his tax bracket percentage based on the tax year, the filing status, and then his annual gross income. It will actually show you what his tax bracket percentage is. You can go ahead and exit right out of that, go back into Edge, and put that tax bracket percentage in, and it'll show you those tax benefits on the report, and I'll show you guys later. Going ahead and moving right forward to the next affordabilities tab. This is where you can get an idea of what John would like to spend. Again, this is one of those tabs that's just asking probing questions, but you don't necessarily have to fill this out. You can move right forward to the products tab and start showing John what you can do for him. So in those first tabs, the clients, the goals, the assumptions, and the affordability, we got some information from John. Now we want to show John what we can do for him on our products tab. We're going to start building out our first product, and the first thing we're going to do is give our product a name. I like to use the agency and the down payment. Just remember that there is a 12 character max in the product name, so you want to put a product name that's very specific and straight to the point something that your borrower is going to be able to understand because whatever you put in this product name field will actually show in your final report. I'm going to jump right down to my add product from template. This is where that product template comes into play. So where we built in that conventional 5% down, it's already in that product template. So if you wanted to pull in any product template, you could go ahead and pull it in. It's automatically going to populate some information for you. I'm going to use my FHA purchase with a 3.5% down. Notice it automatically populated some information. I can just make some minor adjustments if needed. It automatically told the system that this is an FHA program that I'm doing. It put in my 3.5% down payment. It brought over an interest rate. It brought over the term. My interest rate changes. I can go ahead and put in my new interest rate. But now I'm ready to just move right forward to put it in my closing costs. Now notice on the closing cost tab, because I did use that product template, it automatically brought those fees over for me. You also notice that the upfront in my field is down at the bottom as well. So you guys have the option of putting in the upfront in my amount and then adding it to the loan amount. If in fact your product template did not have any fee templates attached, or if you want to make some changes to your fee template, go ahead and click on that closing cost details. It will bring up that itemized list of all your fees. You can make some changes. You can add fees. You can even save new templates. But once you have all of your fees in place, you can go ahead and click on Apply to Loan. And you bring over all your fees, and you can move right forward to your monthly cost tab. Now, again, because we used our FHA um, product template, it automatically brought over our hazard insurance percentage, our tax percentages, to calculate our monthly hazard and property tax amount. If you need to make adjustments to that, you definitely can. And it brought over our mortgage insurance factor as well. You can definitely make changes to that mortgage insurance factor as well. It brought over our MI cutoff percentage. It checked in to calculate MI on balance. And then it brought in the month cutoff for MI. So just remember when you guys are doing your FHA loans, you're going to put in that MI 360 months because the MI is going to carry for the life of the loan on the MI product on that FHA product. Then you put in your hazard reserves, your tax reserves, and you collect your 12-month premium. And now you're ready to go ahead and add another product to be able to compare this FHA to. So I'm going to click on Add Product. It brings me right back to the products page, but now that products page is blank. So I want to start creating a second product, and I'm going to call this product my conventional 5% down. Now remember, you do have the option of using your product templates, or if you just want to copy over all the information from your FHA and make some minor adjustments, you click on that Copy From button. You can copy from that FHA product you've already built out. Click OK. And the first thing you're going to do is make your minor adjustments by telling the system this is no longer an FHA program. Change your down payment to 5%. Maybe your interest rate is going to go up a little bit. And you're done. You can move right forward to your closing cost tab, make some adjustments to your closing cost. But if your closing cost doesn't change from product to product, you're perfectly fine. 
But just make sure you notice at the bottom here that that upfront MI is gone because we now told the system this is not an FHA program, so we no longer have upfront MI. Move right forward to your monthly costs. You can make some adjustments to your hazard property taxes if needed, but you can go ahead and start making your changes to your MI factor because it's going to be different since this is a conventional loan. We're going to uncheck the box, we'll calculate that MI in the balance, and we're going to take our MI cutoff months off because this is no longer FHA. We're going to leave in our hazard and tax reserves, and we're going to leave that checkbox to collect a 12-month premium. Now you're done with building out that second product just that quick. Now if you have another product you want to build out, you can definitely go ahead and click on that Add Product button. Just remember that you have the option of building up to four different products to compare. I'm going to go ahead and advance right forward to our Analysis tab. Here's where you're going to start tailoring the report to show what's most important to your borrower. You have your property appreciation rate. It's defaulted at 3%, but you can change it according to the market area. Your short-term analysis is shown in months, and you can change that. Your long-term analysis is shown in years, and again, you can change those years. And then your benchmarks are selected to show the highest default. So right now, it's showing that our borrower, if they were to go with that FHA 3.5% down, they'd actually have a $25 monthly savings. Reason why is because of those new FHA factors. FHA factor was a little bit lower than our conventional factor, even though the borrower put less of a down payment. Then you jump right down to your short-term savings, you have your long-term savings, and here's where you can go ahead and tailor your long-term savings to show them either the total interest in MI, their total net worth, or their total principal paid. On that Adjust Reinvestment Strategy button, that's where that pop-up box will populate, and in the blue section is where you can go ahead and make some adjustments and showing your borrowers how they can actually reinvest. Top section, again, you can show them how they can reinvest back into the principal. Middle section, show them how they can reinvest into that short-term savings account. Or this bottom section, showing them how they can invest into a long-term savings account. And simply checking off that uh, payoff first with accumulation box, showing them how they could take that accumulation amount and apply it towards the freedom point to reduce their freedom point down. If you guys have more questions on that, either you can put them in the chat box, and if we have some time left, I'll definitely cover that. Or you can always send us an email over at support at mortgagecoach.com. We'll definitely make sure we get you some additional training on reinvestment strategies. Once you have your reinvestment strategies in place, go ahead and click your OK button, and then you can move right forward to your contact screen. Now, on your contact screen, this is where you're going to put in the information on how to get back in contact with your borrower. So first, you're going to put in your borrower's email address, you're going to put in their phone number, then you're going to go jump right down and you're going to put in the property address. If you don't have a property address yet, you can put in your future dream home or to be determined, etc. But by putting in some information on this contact screen, with that alert notification that you're going to receive, your borrower's contact information is going to be there as well. So you can quickly go ahead and get right back in contact with your borrower after you've been notified that they've reviewed your report. We're going to move right forward to our first presentation tab, and here's where you're going to select the presentation you're going to show to John. You have the option of showing that total cost analysis, the seller buy-down, or the amortization schedule for each individual product, and then you even have a Fannie Mae export as well. Your products that you've built out are listed in the middle of the page. You can't actually delete any products but you can uncheck a box, and that will actually remove that product from being shown on the report. I'm going to click on both of our products so we can show both of our products on the report. In the payment notes section, this is where you can show your borrowers some payment notes. Again, this is a compliance piece. So maybe you want to let them know that the estimated taxes and, ins or the estimated taxes and insurance is included in that monthly payment. Whatever you put in this payment notes section, again, will show in that report with the double asterisk. Now we're going to move right forward, and we're, going to, we're done with building out our report, and now we come up to some summary pages. This is just a quick recap of what we went over on the Analysis tab. So if you want to quickly be able to bypass those recap screens, just go ahead and hover your mouse over that Final Presentation tab, click on that Preview Jump button, and it will link you right over to that Final Presentation page, where now you can select how you're going to get this presentation out to your client. Either you can save it as a PDF, you can print the report, but I do recommend that you email the link. 
because not only are you going to be able to quickly get the information to your client, but you're going to be notified when the report has been viewed. You can also click on that checkbox to notify your partner when the report has been viewed. Then you're going to put in your quote date for today's date to remind yourself and your borrower when the report was created, and you're going to click on Generate Link. Once you click on the Generate Link button, it will automatically populate that custom personalized link that you can go ahead and copy and paste and send off in a separate email to your client. Now maybe before you actually send out that report, maybe you want to go ahead and explain the report to your borrower. Click on that Add Audio Video button. You can add some audio video, attach it to your report. Maybe you want to introduce yourself, explain the report, etc. But you have your completed report up and ready to go. You can highlight certain things. Maybe you want to highlight the loan amounts for each individual product. Maybe you want to highlight those monthly payments. You want to highlight those different savings. You can highlight anything on your report. It will stay highlighted the entire time unless you click on that Clear All button to clear out all those highlights. But now those are the things you want to point out to your borrower. You can go ahead and click on that Record Message button. It will then open up a webcam box for you where you can click on the Allow for Camera and Microphone Access. It will then bring up the camera. Hello, everyone. I'm Lakeisha. And then you can go ahead and record some audio to be able to attach to your report. This is recording some audio and video. Now, if you don't have a webcam or maybe your camera's shy, you can always click on that Record Audio Only button, and it will bring open a black page. And you'll still be able to record some audio and attach to your report. When you're ready to record, no matter if it's audio or video, just click on that Record button, and it will start your recording. Once you're done, click the Stop. It will stop your recording. If you ever want to delete a recording, just hit that trash can button, and your recording will be deleted. But once you're done with your recording, simply go ahead and exit out of the uh, camera and microphone webcam box there, and your recording is automatically attached to your report. Now, if ever you want to go back into your report and you want to view it in real time with your borrower, you can either go to your Edge Live in your Generate Link box, or you can always go to your Preview button, which it will then still bring open your report. Notice that we still have those highlights there as well. I'm going to go ahead and clear out all of my highlights. And now I'm going to point out some certain things that we built out. Here is where that Start Now button will actually show when you put in your Apply Now address um, field. This is your logo. Your photo will be here. And then your information is listed on the report as well. So if your borrower actually sends your report out and shared with family members or friends, maybe you're communicating with them in real time, you're going to be able to see how many viewers are actually viewing the report with you. Down at the bottom, it tells you the number of viewers. So again, this is our completed product. I hope everyone uh, followed along with us. This is you guys' opportunity to go ahead and put some questions in the chat box. We do have a couple more minutes left before we end our call, so I encourage everyone to go ahead and put some questions in that question box if you have any. If you don't have any questions now or you think of some after the call, you can always send us an email, again, over at support at mortgagecoach.com. That's support at mortgagecoach.com. We'll definitely assist you in any way that we possibly can. If you're building out reports and you want some information, maybe you want to know if, in fact, you build your report correctly, you can also send us your report link. We will review each and every report that you guys send over, and we will provide you some feedback. So we do have a question in the chat box where it says, go over setting up fee templates. Yes, yeah, so I can definitely show you guys again how to set up a fee template. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of my report. I'm going to go back to my settings tab. Again, your navigation buttons up here, your radio buttons, your settings tab is where you would go to start setting up a fee template. And here you have your fee template uh, tab is where you would go to start setting that up. If you already have fee templates that have been created, they will be listed here off to the side. If you don't have any fee templates, it will just be blank. If you ever want to delete a fee template that's already been created, you can simply just go ahead and click on that delete button and it will delete that particular fee template. I'm going to go ahead and delete these fee templates that we've created so we can start building a new one. So when you're ready to start building a new fee template, just click on that new button, give your template a name, Click your OK. You also have a state drop-down select as well. 
So if, in fact, this particular template would apply to loans in a particular state, you can drop, click on that drop-down box and click the OK button. And from here, you would then go ahead and start adding in your fees that apply. So click on that Add Fee button. Maybe you want to add in an inspection fee. You can add in maybe a loan origination fee. Maybe you want to add in an appraisal fee. Um, there's, you can just continue to click in and add different fees. Put in the amount for that fee. Maybe your inspection fee is $25. Your loan origination fee is 1%. Maybe your appraisal fee is $425. But once you have all of your fees in place, you can select whether or not those fees are considered APR fees, if they're going to be added to the loan amount, if they're prepaid escrow fees, and so forth. And then your fee template is created just that quick and easy. So you don't have to click on any Save button your fee template is automatically created for you. Now, if you're within a product, so say you're in a loan, you're building out that loan, um, and you're on your Products tab, and you're in your Closing Costs screen here, you can also build fee templates from here as well. So if you don't have any fees listed, or maybe you have fees listed and you just want to add fees and create a new template, you can always click on that Add Fee button again, add that particular fee that would apply, give it a dollar amount, select who's actually paying for that fee, if it's APR, non-APR related, etc. And then now you can click on Save as Template. It's going to give you the option of saving that particular fee template. You can still select if there's a state associated, click OK. And now that fee template is available in your drop-down. So in your drop-down list here, you'll notice that we have our fee template, and then we have our new template that we built in our settings section. So you have two different ways of being able to build out those different fee templates. So I hope that answered your question. If you need some additional assistance after the call, you can always send us an email over to support at mortgagecoach.com. I did put the support email address into the chat box as well for everyone. So go ahead and put some more questions in the chat box for us if you guys have any additional questions. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining this Friday's Beginners course. We do have this course each and every Friday. We also have Tuesday and Thursday training calls. And then in the month of February, we're going to have a slew of different trainings available each and every day of the week where we're going to be talking about a lot of different tools and strategies that you guys will be able to use. We're going to start from the very beginning and just continue to advance forward with showing you different ways of using Mortgage Coach. So I encourage everyone to visit our event calendar in the month of February, register for those different classes that we have coming up, attend the classes. Send us over your reports as you build them out and continue to remember that we are here to build that success together. I want to challenge everyone to uh, go ahead and build out five different total cost analysis, no matter who the client is or no matter the different scenarios that you're building out, and then go ahead and send those um, reports that you're building out to us. Send them over to us at support at mortgagecoach.com, and we'll definitely be sure to answer any of those questions that you might have. I have another question that came into the question box that says, can you go over the additional payment options? So I assume what you mean is the reinvestment strategies. So if, when you're wanting to show your clients how they can make additional payments, um, maybe they want to show how they can pay an additional $100 a month and apply it towards the principal to reduce their freedom point, you would do that in the reinvestment strategy. So if I go back into the report that I've built out, Reinvestment strategy is available on the Analysis tab. So you have your Reinvestment Strategy button. You click on that button, and this top section is where you would show how to reinvest back into the principal to reduce the freedom point. So where it says Reduction Payment, you would type in the amount that the borrower wants to pay back into the principal. So let's just say that's $100 a month. And then once they've, you, uh, excuse me, once you've typed in that $100 a month, go ahead and hit your Tab fee or tab button, it will automatically then reduce that freedom point from 30 years. You notice that it reduced it down to 26 years. You can do the same thing for each individual product, and it will just take it accordingly for that particular product. So on our FHA, it's showing that it's 26.75, and then on a conventional, 26.58. In this middle section here is how you can show them if they wanted to invest into a savings, a short-term savings account. 
So because on our affordabilities tab, we put that they have $60,000 already in a savings account, if they go with this FHA loan, it's going to take them $19,000 some odd dollars to close, so they'd have a remaining savings balance of $40,000. We put that they had a 0.2% savings rate. So they have $41,000 in that savings account at that 15-year mark if they continue to just leave that $40,000 in that savings account. Now what you could do is then show them how they can take an extra $100 payment and put it into a long-term account. So in this bottom section where it says investment balance, you could put in a higher rate of return, maybe like a 2% rate of return. You could put in a payment amount, so they want to pay $100 a month, and so let's just say this is an IRA, they're going to put $100 a month into that IRA account at a 2% rate of return. You'd be able to show them that they'd be able to save that $20,000 over that 20-month period, over 15-year period, excuse me, just by putting in $100 a month. So now, with that savings that they had in their short-term savings, with the $41,000 that they've saved at that 15-year period, plus they've been putting in an extra $100 a month into a long-term savings with a 2% rate of return, they now have a $62,000 some odd dollar savings. They've already reduced their freedom point by 26, down to 26 years because they've been putting in an extra $100 into the mortgage. But if you want to take this $62,000 and show them, continue to save that money and then at that 15-year period, put it back into the principal, just go ahead and click off that pay first with the accumulation box, and then it's going to reduce your freedom point even more. So it's now showing them that they're going to be reducing their freedom point down to 22 years. So again, you guys are being able to show them a lot of different reinvestment strategies here on this reinvestment strategy tab. So I hope that answered your question. And again, if you have additional questions or need additional assistance with that, send us an email over to support at mortgagecoach.com and we'll definitely assist you each and every step of the way. So if there's not any other questions, I want to thank everyone for attending, encourage you to complete the homework assignment, complete those five total cost analysis, send them over to us, again, at support at mortgagecoach.com. We'll definitely review each and every one of those reports. And then go ahead and visit the event calendar and attend some of those training courses that we're going to have coming up in the month of February. I want to thank everyone for attending, and I also want uh, to let you remind you guys that we are here to build success together. So if you need any additional assistance, again, support at mortgagecoach.com. Thanks, everyone, for attending, and have a great, great weekend.